The Sultanate of Rum was a medieval Turkic, Sunni Muslim state in Anatolia. It existed from 1077 to 1307, with capitals first at Iznik and then at Konya. However, the court of the Sultanate was highly mobile, and cities like Aziri and Shivas also temporarily functioned as capitals. At its height, the Sultanate stretched across central Anatolia, from the shoreline of Antalya and Alanya on the Mediterranean coast to the territory of Sinaf on the Black Sea. In the east, the Sultanate absorbed other Turkish states and reached Lake Van. Its westernmost limit was near Denizli and the gates of the Aegean Basin. The term Rum comes from the Arabic word for the Roman Empire. The Seljuks called the lands of their Sultanate Rum because it had been established on territory long considered Roman, i.e., Byzantine, by Muslim armies. The state is occasionally called the Sultanate of Konya in older Western sources. The Sultanate prospered particularly during the late 12th and early 13th centuries when it took from the Byzantines key ports on the Mediterranean and Black Sea coasts. Within Anatolia the Seljuks fostered trade through a program of caravanserai building, which facilitated the flow of goods from Iran and Central Asia to the ports. Especially strong trade ties with the Genos are formed during this period. The increased wealth allowed the Sultanate to absorb other Turkish states that had been established in eastern Anatolia after the Battle of Manzikert. The Danishmans, the Mengucek, the Sultukids, and the Arturkids. Seljuk sultans successfully bore the brunt of the Crusades but in 1243 succumbed to the advancing Mongols. The Seljuks became vassals of the Mongols, following the Battle of Kozadag. In despite the efforts of shrewd administrators to preserve the state's integrity, the power of the Sultanate disintegrated during the second half of the 13th century and had disappeared completely by the first decade of the 14th. In its final decades, a number of small principalities, or Baliks, emerged and rose to dominance in the territory of the Sultanate, including that of the House of Osman, which later founded the Ottoman Empire. Establishment In the 1070s, after the Battle of Manzikert, the Selju commander Suleiman bin Kutamish, a distant cousin of Malik Shah and a former contender for the throne of the Great Seljuk Empire, came to power in western Anatolia. In 1075, he captured the Byzantine cities of Nicaea and Nicomedia. Two years later he declared himself Sultan of an independent Seljuk state and established his capital at Iznuk. Suleiman was killed in Antioch in 1086 by Tutushai, the Seljuk ruler of Syria, and Suleiman's son Kilij Arslan I was imprisoned. When Malik Shah died in 1092, Kilij Arslan was released and immediately established himself in his father's territories. He was eventually defeated by soldiers of the First Crusade and driven back into south-central Anatolia, where he set up his state with capital in Konya. In 1107, he ventured east and captured Mosul but died the same year fighting Malik Shah's son Mehmed Tarpar. Meanwhile, another Rum Seljuk, Melik Shah, captured Konya. In 1116 Kilij Arslan's son, Metudai, took the city with the help of the Danishmans. Upon Mesud's death in 1156, the Sultanate controlled nearly all of central Anatolia. Mesud's son, Kilij Arslan II, captured the remaining territories around Shivas and Malachia from the last of the Danishmans. At the Battle of Mariok Hephalon in 1176, Kili Jarslan also defeated a Byzantine army led by Manuel I Komnenos, dealing a major blow to Byzantine power in the region. Despite her temporary occupation of Konya in 1190 by German forces of the Third Crusade, the Sultanate was quick to recover and consolidate its power. After the death of the last Sultan of Great Seljuk, Tugrul III, in 1194, the Seljuks of Rum became the sole ruling representatives of the dynasty. Caicos Rurai seized Konya from the Crusaders in 1205. Under his rule and those of his two successors, Caicosai and Caigubidai, Seljuk power in Anatolia reached its apogee. 
Caicos Roar's most important achievement was the capture of the harbour of Italia on the Mediterranean coast in 1207. His son Caicos captured Sinif and made the empire of Trebizond his vassal in 1214. He also subjugated Cilicia and Armenia but in 1218 was forced to surrender the city of Aleppo, acquired from al Kamal. Kagubert continued to acquire lands along the Mediterranean coast from 1221 to 1225. In the 1220s, he sent an expeditionary force across the Black Sea to Crimea. In the east he defeated the Menguchiks and began to put pressure on the Artuakids. Downfall. Kakasraw II began his reign by capturing the region around Diyabkir. But in 1239 he had to face an uprising led by a popular preacher named Barbarishik. After three years, when he had finally quelled the revolt, the Crimean foothold was lost and the state and the Sultanate's army had weakened. It is in these conditions that he had to face a far more dangerous threat, that of the expanding Mongols. Mongol forces took Erzurum in 1242 and in 1243, the Sultan was crushed by Beju in the Battle of Kozadag, and the Seljuk Turks were forced to swear allegiance to the Mongols and became their vassals. The Sultan himself had fled to Antalya after the 1243 battle, where he died in 1246, his death starting a period of tripartite and then dual rule that lasted until 1260. The Seljuk realm was divided among Caicosraw's three sons. The eldest, Caicos II, assumed the rule in the area west of the river Kizilimic. His younger brothers, Kilij Arslin IV and Kaguba II, were set to rule the regions east of the river under Mongol administration. In October 1256 Beidou defeated Caicos II near Aksarai and all of Anatolia became officially subject to Monka Khan. In 1260 Kaikos II fled from Konya to Crimea where he died in 1279. Kili Jaslin IV was executed in 1265 and Kaikos III became the nominal ruler of all of Anatolia. With the tangible power exercised either by the Mongols or the Sultan's influential regents, the Seljuk state had started to split into small emirates that increasingly distanced themselves from both Mongol and Seljuk control. In 1277, responding to a call from Anatolia, the Mameluk Sultan Baybars raided Anatolia and defeated the Mongols, temporarily replacing them as the administrator of the Seljuk realm. But since the native forces who had called him to Anatolia did not manifest themselves for the defense of the land, he had to return to his home base in Egypt, and the Mongol administration was reassumed, officially and severely. Also, the Armenian Kingdom of Cilicia captured the Mediterranean coast from Salinos to Seleucia, as well as the cities of Marish and Bahizni, from the Seljuk in the 1240s. Near the end of his reign, Caicosraw III could claim direct sovereignty only over lands around Konya. Some of the Baliks and Seljuk governors of Anatolia continued to recognize, albeit nominally, the supremacy of the Sultan in Konya, delivering the Kutbar in the name of the Sultans in Konya in recognition of their sovereignty, and the Sultans continued to call themselves Fareddin the pride of Islam. When Caicos Raw III was executed in 1284, the Seljuk dynasty suffered another blow from internal struggles which lasted until 1303 when the son of Caicos II, Mesud II, established himself as Sultan in Kayseri. He was murdered in 1307 and his son Mesud III soon afterwards. A distant relative to the Seljuk dynasty momentarily installed himself as emir of Konya, but he was defeated and his lands conquered by the Karamanids in 1328. The Sultanate's monetary sphere of influence lasted slightly longer and coins of Seljuk mint, generally considered to be of reliable value continued to be used throughout the 14th century, once again, including by the Ottomans, culture and society. The Seljuk dynasty of Rum, as successors to the great Seljuks, based their political, religious and cultural heritage on the Perso-Islamic tradition, even to the point of naming their sons with Persian names. 
though of Turkic origin. Ramseljuk's patronized Persian at architecture and literature and used Persian as a language of administration. Moreover, Byzantine influence in the Sultanate was also significant, since Greek aristocracy remained part of the Seljuk nobility and the local Greek population was numerous in the region. In the construction of caravanserais, medrases and mosques, the Rum Seljuks translated the Iranian Seljuk architecture of bricks and plaster into the use of stone. Among these, the caravanserais, used as stops, trading posts and defense for caravans and of which about a hundred structures were built during the Anatolian Seljuks period, are particularly remarkable. Along with Persian influences, which had an indisputable effect, Seljuk architecture was inspired by Christian and Muslim Armenians. As such, Anatolian architecture represents some of the most distinctive and impressive constructions in the entire history of Islamic architecture. Later, this Anatolian architecture would be transmitted to Sultanate India. The largest caravanserai is the Sultan Han on the road between the cities of Konya and Aksarai, in the township of Sultan Hani depending the latter city, enclosing 3,900 square meters. There are two caravanserais that carry the name of Sultan Han, the other one being between Kayseri and Shivas. Furthermore, apart from Sultan Hani, five other towns across Turkey owe their names to caravanserais built there. These are Alakohan in Kangal, Duragan, Hekiman and Kadiniani, as well as the township of Akan within the Denizli metropolitan area. The caravanserai of Hekiman is unique in having, underneath the usual inscription in Arabic with information relating to the edifice, Two further inscriptions in Armenian and Syriac. Since it was constructed by the Sultan Kagub, the first doctor who is thought to have been a Christian by his origins, and to have converted to Islam. There are other particular cases like the settlement in the Kalehisa site near Alakar, founded by the Seljuk commander Hussam Eden Tamerlu, who had taken refuge in the region after the defeat in the Battle of Kozadag and had founded a township comprising a castle, a medris a habitation zone and a caravanserai, which were later abandoned apparently around the 16th century. All but the caravanserai, which remains undiscovered, was explored in the 1960s by the art historian Octay Aslanipar, and the finds as well as a number of documents attest to the existence of a vivid settlement in the site such as a 1463 Ottoman firman which instructs the headmaster of the Medris to lodge not in the school but in the caravanserai. The Seljuk palaces, as well as their armies, were staffed with ghulam, enslaved youths taken from non-Muslim communities, mainly Greeks from former Byzantine territories. The Gulen practice may have offered a model for the later of Shirma during the time of the Ottoman Empire dynasty. As regards the names of the sultans, there are variants in form and spelling depending on the preferences displayed by one source or the other, either for fidelity in transliterating the Persian-influenced variant of the Arabic script which the sultans used, or for a rendering corresponding to the modern Turkish phonology and orthography. Some sultans had two names that they chose to use alternatively in reference to their legacy. While the two palaces built by Ala Eden Kikubadai carry the names Kibidabad Palace and Kikubadia Palace, he named his mosque in Konya as Ala Eden Mosque and the port city of Alanya he had captured as Alaya. Similarly, the medris built by Caicos Rorai in Kayseri, within the complex dedicated to his sister Gevher Nesib, was named Giasiya Medris and the one built by Zed and Kikavisai in Shivas is Izdiya Medris.